Yo, what is up guys? I have an exercise tutorial for you today. We are going through one of my favorite shoulder stability exercises, which is the windmill. I've got a couple of different variations here for you, depending on your skill level. So the reason I like the windmill so much is because it takes our shoulder joint through multiple joint angles and planes of movement, okay? So our three planes of movement are sagittal plane, front to back. We have frontal plane, side to side, we have transverse plane, rotation, okay? The windmill takes the shoulder joint through all three planes of movement, all right? So when it comes to um, building muscle, building strength, uh, producing speed, power, force output, etc., we need to have stability first, all right? If we don't have stability, then our brain is going to recognize that and it's going to down-regulate force production, meaning our muscles can't fire as hard or as fast, all right? So mobility is your ability to take your joint through full range of movement under control and stability is a component of that. Stability is the strength required to go through your mobility, okay? It's essentially your ability to resist force, okay? Then strength is your ability to produce force. So if we don't have mobility, our range of movement's limited. If we don't have stability, our force output is limited, all right? So let's go through the windmill. First option is going to be simply with a water bottle. Okay, all I want you guys to do, take your feet, double shoulder width, toes slightly turned out. From here, I'm gonna drive my arm up, lock it out overhead. Very important that the arms stay stacked here. From here, I drive the hips back. I hinge through the hips, rotate through my trunk, let my shoulder move freely whilst keeping my wrist pointed towards the ceiling. My opposite arm, I'm gonna reach down, between my toes. That shoulder moves slow and free. Nice and slow. All right, I might do three to five reps there. That's the first variation. Second variation is I'm gonna go bottoms up. This challenges my stability a little bit more. Same thing, I hinge, hips, rotate, trunk, reach, arms. All right, again, you'll see my shoulder moves freely. All right, so we practice that with a water bottle or a light weight or something like that. Now, if you're limited with your mobility and stability through that range, what you might do is go here, I'm gonna drive my hips back, reach, and I'm driving my arm down my leg. I might get to here, and I might be limited here, I might be limited here, I might be limited here, then, I reach across, I pause, come back, slide back up, okay? You wanna make that movement nice and smooth. If movement looks good, it normally feels good. All right, so that is the first option. The second option is going to be with a kettlebell. You can use a dumbbell here as well. All right, I'm gonna use a kettlebell. I swing up, okay? You can snatch up, clean, press any option that suits you. Point to note here, I want my wrist locked out, not cocked. Wrist locked out, forearm, vertical. From here, lock that shoulder, reach the hips, rotate trunk, reach shoulders. Goal is to get that kettlebell moving smooth. On the opposite side, reach, Rotate, reach. And from the back. Watch my shoulder move. Freely. All right. That is the second option. If you have the range of movement, you can reach further. You can place your hand on the ground. Or you can do this exercise with your feet elevated on plates. So it forces you to reach further, increase your range of movement, okay? Next option here is bottoms up. Bottoms up is my favorite, all right? It really challenges your ability to stabilize the shoulder girdle. Now, if you don't have the bottoms up, start with the first drill with a water bottle or a light dumbbell, then work through a kettlebell. Once you have the ability to resist that force, and allow that joint to move freely, 
then you can challenge it by going into a bottoms up drill. So what I'm going to do here, swing it up, bottoms up. Very important here, forearm stays vertical. If the arm gets away from us, it's very hard to control that movement. Stack the joints. All right, now I do the same thing. Reach, rotate, reach. Allow that joint to move free. The goal is to keep that kettlebell as stable as possible through full range of movement. You'll notice my hips are driving the movement. I want to make it a hip dominant movement, not a knee dominant movement. So reach the hips, rotate through the trunk, reach with the arm. I actually like to use the windmill as an assessment to start my training session, okay, because it can show me a lot about my mobility for the day, where I'm tight, where I'm holding tension, so then I can use a foam roller, lacrosse ball, bands, stretches, all of my mobility based tools um, to switch off what's tight, okay. Then I'm stabilizing the shoulder through that range of movement, all right. Now think about it like this, if I can't stabilize in that overhead position with a light weight, should I be loading up a heavy military press or push press or split jerk or something like that? No. All right, stability comes before strength. Now if you don't have access to a kettlebell, you can use mace bells, you can use Indian clubs or you can use a plate, okay? All we want to do is take the shoulder joint through its fullest range of movement that it's capable of whilst maintaining strength, control, and stability, okay? So um, those tools are also excellent options for creating stability in the shoulder girdle, all right? And I like to start my training session stabilizing the hips, which is the hip airplane. Go uh, and search for that exercise on my YouTube channel. And I also have my plate, around the world as an option, okay? So I'm strengthening that shoulder through the sagittal plane, front to back, frontal plane, side to side, transverse plane through rotation.